If you've ever looked at an ordnance survey map, you'll have seen the contours, lines joining places which are the same height above sea level. You can spot high places, low places, and places where the contours are close together and the slopes are steep. The contours are drawn at equal intervals. There might be one every 5 metres or 10 metres. But contour maps are useful for many things other than height. In meteorology, isobars link places where the atmospheric pressure is the same. We use isotherms for temperature, isotax for wind speed, and isohyats for rainfall. How do you go about creating a contour map from a set of observations? Let's start with a simple temperature map. You can see that the warmest temperatures are in the centre of the map and it gets progressively colder as you go towards the edges. Where would you draw the 10 degree centigrade isotherm on this map? It will pass through the place where the temperature was measured at 10 degrees, but where else will it go? Let's start by looking at these two dots. The temperature was measured at 9 degrees at this one and 11 degrees at this one. It's reasonable to assume that it's 10 degrees halfway between the two. So the 10 degree isotherm will pass here. Looking at these two dots, the temperature is measured at 8 degrees at this place and 11 degrees at this one. So again, it's reasonable to assume that the 10 degree isotherm will pass closer to the 11 degree dot than the 8 degree dot. We can look at the other places on the map in a similar way and work out where the isotherm needs to pass. Once you've looked around the map like this, you can complete the isotherm. In this case, the 10 degree isotherm forms a complete circle. Everything inside the circle is warmer than 10 degrees, everything outside the circle is colder than 10 degrees, and everywhere on the line is precisely 10 degrees centigrade. It's like a hilltop of temperature. Remember, contours can't stop in the middle of the map, but they do stop at the edges. They can also join up to make a complete circle. Contours can't touch or cross. That would imply it was two different temperatures simultaneously. Sometimes there isn't enough information to know exactly what a contour does, and there is more than one way you could draw it. Now let's look at a slightly more complicated map. How would you draw the six degree contour on this map? One easy way is to colour in all the places where the temperature is over six degrees. The six degree contour is a line that will separate all the coloured dots from all those that are not coloured. In this case, it's a circle again. Now how about the 4.5 degree centigrade isotherm? Again, colour all the dots that are warmer than 4.5 degrees. It's pretty much everything. Now the 4.5 degree contour is again the line that will separate all the coloured dots from the not coloured ones. But this time, we can't join the contours up into a circle as we don't know what the temperatures are doing outside our map, so the contours just finish at the edges. You can find several contour drawing exercises on the Metlink website.